So now that you know the basics of Require.js, let's load the capability APIs into a new mashup project. And we're just going to reuse the Require.js code that we've been building out over the last few tutorials. And we can convert this into a mashup on the ClickSense server. So you'll need to download ClickSense desktop for this part of the tutorial. Uh, and I have, and I have it open. Here is the ClickSense hub. So what I'm going to do, I've got our Require.js folder that we've been working on. I'm going to copy this and just paste this into our click sense extensions folder. And I'm just going to rename this to starter mashup. And then in the Visual Studio code, I'm not going to close this. And I'm going to just open that folder. So in documents, click sense extensions, start a mashup, we can select this folder. And here is all the code that we have just been working on, so app.js, method.js, um, and a few other files. So if we navigate to the dev hub, we're actually not going to see this mashup appear quite yet. And that is because we need to add a couple of additional files for our mashup actually to be recognized by ClickSense as in fact a mashup. And that is a .qext file that we're going to be needing just to add some metadata uh, around our project. So if we go to our Visual Studio code, create a new file called starter mashup.qext and we can actually create that metadata. So in type, this is a type of file is a mashup. We need to give it a name, which is going to be called starter mashup. And we've got a number of optional fields here, so I'm going to add a description. And it's going to be called a starter mashup template. with bootstrap and we can add a version for our project 1.0.0 and we can add some dependencies dependencies and that is click sense and the version of greater or equal to three dots .x. Okay, so there is our starter mashup.qext. So now returning to the dev hub and refreshing. There we have it. We've got a new mashup now popping up on our dev hub. So Click is actually recognizing this as a mashup. Obviously, there are other types like mashup template or extensions, and we've set this to mashup so it's syncing into this mashup section on the dev hub. Now, when we open this, there are going to be no files, and there are no files because we've not included a wb folder wbl file in our project. So this actually syncs the files that we're working on here into the dev hub UI. So if I get a wb folder wbl, so your mashup will work without this, but if you want to see your files kind of pop up on that UI, there we need to. Add them in here, so main.js index.html starts a mashup.qext and app slash app.js and app slash method.js. And once we go back and now open that starter mashup. Now we've got our files all loaded and you can see now we do have that pop-up modular programming is awesome, which we did configure in our last lesson. So cool, this is working nicely. So I'm gonna preview this in view. Again, we get that pop-up, which we should really now disable. So method.js, we can return method. I'm just gonna remove this alert. And I'm gonna bring up the console and you can see we've got the two versions loaded of our 
jQuery and Bootstrap versions. I'm going to remove these two. We don't need these anymore. We'll just stick with this. And now that we have our project loading as a mashup, let's think about how we can add the capability APIs. So back in main.js, we're actually going to have to create a new config for this and require the capability APIs. As mentioned previously, uh, there is a requirement on using require.js to load those API files. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to keep this current config. Now, the reason I want to keep this config is because we might want to use Bootstrap later in our project um, in our app.js file. So let's keep this and let's just store this config into a variable called app require. And we can add one parameter here called context. And we can set a context for the rest of this config, um, which is app require. And we can actually add that in our require call in some curly braces. So context app require. Now you may be thinking, why can't we just add our click require config into this config that we've already created? Now the reason for that is that we are loading these libraries relative to this base URL here, this LIB folder. And the ClickSense APIs are going to need to be loaded relative to a different base URL, and that is actually located on the server itself, so on the ClickSense server. So ClickSense stores the capability APIs and a required JS version, which we're going to be needing uh, on the ClickSense server itself. So we're going to need a different config and different base URL. Now this should all still be working as expected. And we can go back and refresh this modular programming is awesome. Awesome. I thought we commented that out, which we did. So let's go back and do a hard reload. There we go. And we can, we're still loading everything. And you can see now that pop-up has been removed. Okay, so now we can actually load the click APIs. So we need a new require dot config. And we can set a new base URL to the location of the click APIs. And these are located on the server at HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost 4848. So this depends on the ports that you're using and then resources forward slash. So in this folder on our server, which is hosting ClickSense, is where these are stored. So if you use any of the basic mashup templates that Click have created for you, there's going to be a little bit more detail around this config. And that's because it is set to work whether you're loading on a server or localhost or wherever. So they've just got a bit of logic around setting the configuration. But this is really the bare bones of what we need. So I'm not going to go into any more complexity than this. So I'm presuming that you are working on this tutorial on your local host. If you're looking at it from a server point of view, then you're just going to have to change this base URL. You can add some variables like click have done in their examples. Okay, so once we've got this, we can then require the click APIs, execute a function, let's pass that parameter of click, and we can actually nest this inside this require call. I'm just going to add a comment here load app.js. And just to make sure that's all worked, we can add a console log of that click parameter. Now, this is going to throw an error. And the error we're going to see is it's going to throw because we are loading require.js from our library here, which we have downloaded from the internet. So if we go and have a look and refresh, so we've got some errors here. So window.click mashup loader is not a function. So we actually need to use the ClickSense version of Require.js that is also hosted on the Click server. 
Reason being is there is a bit more to that file than just the required JS library. So let's remove this. And we need to navigate into that resources folder where we also accessed the click API. So we need to go back to, and then we need to go into resources, assets, external, require JS, and require dot JS. And then if we refresh this, everything is working nicely. So first of all, we have added the got our console log here for our click object. And from this click object, we can start accessing the capability APIs. We can open an application, you know, create hypercubes, all that good stuff. So that is in the console log here. And we're still loading our jQuery and Bootstrap versions. So great, we're kind of set up now for a ClickSense mashup project, and we've also got Bootstrap and jQuery loaded into our project. A couple of things to note before I end this tutorial. Do note that the Click Capability APIs also contain a version of jQuery. So you can, in this require call, by all means, go and add jQuery. That is going to work fine. But based on our config, you've also got it available along with Bootstrap in this app.js file. Second thing I just want to show you is actually what is being hosted at these paths that we have kind of typed in here and here. So I'll just show you those files just to maybe demystify what exactly is going on. So we can open a new tab, we can go here to resources, and I've also accessed it slightly earlier. So you can see it assets, external, require.js, require.js. And here is the code and all of the library that Click is loading um, before loading the capability of your API. So this is the version of Require.js plus some additional stuff to make the Click capability APIs work. Now the second thing we've loaded was in resources JS, Click.js. And you can see what we're loading when we actually are requiring this. There is a define call here, which we have covered in a previous lesson. So we're making sure we load this dependency, click require plugin, and then we're just returning this click object. And that object is what we're accessing, which contains the capability APIs. And then we can start using a number of methods in those APIs, as mentioned, like opening an app and um, doing all sorts of that good stuff, stuff and, and building mashups. Okay, cool. So that's all for this tutorial. Just thought I'd give you a quick overview of how we can get started using the capability APIs. Do like and subscribe if you like the content and leave any comments or questions.